Hi everyone. In the past few weeks, I have been very happy by creating a, a new Super Collider and Opus Modus score. This is a topic I did some tutorials on before. It basically um, consists of using Opus Modus for the melodic, harmonic, rhythmic part generation and then using a Super Collider for the sounds, the synths, the effects, etc. Um, so if you haven't watched those tutorials, I would recommend to check those out first. That being said, in this video, I don't want to dive too deep into the Super Collider part. Um, I will play the score at the end of this video and I will let you listen to these sounds. Um, but mostly I want to dive into uh, a couple of Opus Modus techniques. Um, with with that, also what I'd like to mention is that pretty soon we want to start a um, small series of videos um, really going from scratch and explaining the very basics of uh, Opus Modus to sort of bridge the gap between these more advanced tutorials and, and where some people might be at at the moment. All right, uh, with that out of the way, maybe one more thing to mention here is that you can see on the right side, I have the Super Collider documentation. If you're wondering how to achieve that, you can just find this documentation online. Then you can uh, save that as an HTML file, which you can see I have right here. And then you can simply right click to um, open this in the assistant. And from there, you can actually browse all the functions. So for example, you could look for um, Let's do a search. We can look for this hasher function, uh, which is being used right here. And then you can see the input arguments, or uh, you can see the arguments. You can see some super collider code um, with examples. If that isn't enough, or you're wondering what that looks like in CL Collider, the implemented version of Super Collider, um, I have the source code usually for that loaded as well, so that I can uh, quickly go into different files. So I can load, for example, the FFT code, and then I can see what the, what the functions are called, and I can also see the arguments there. Um, if it's not too intimidating to look at some Lisp code, um, this can also be very handy. All right, so like I said, um, I will uh, play some of the sounds that I made. I actually will play all of them, and then we get into some Opus Modus, so, st so stay with me. So the first thing here, we have a kick drum, completely synthesized, it sounds very nice. With all of these uh, synth defs, or def synths, as they're called, I've commented a line below, um, which you can use to play back the synth. I will upload all of this code to the forum. So under videos there, you should be able to find this video and you should be able to get the source code so that you can follow along and experiment. You can steal some stuff, whatever you want. So uh, we have a kick, we have a snare. Uh, I like this snare. It's a little bit of glitch hop kind of sound. Uh, we have a hi-hat. Um, with all of these, we can set arguments so we can make them very short. That should be a dot or we can make this longer. I can make this two seconds. So this is how we control the, the texture of the sound, uh, the attack, the decay, uh, envelope parameters, modulation parameters, etc. Here we have a flute sound, which I've shown before because I really like it. It sounds like this. With all of them, we can change the notes as well. Then a new one here is a polyrhythm sound. For that, I'm using the pulse divider. Again, if we don't know what that is, we can now simply look it up. And basically, this is a thing that's very similar to the, the modular land, where it, um, it's basically a trigger, but we can divide the trigger with a count, and we can use that to create polyrhythms. And this is exactly what I'm doing here. So you can hear that the polyrhythms are panned to the left and the right side. I can make this a little bit shorter to make it clearer. So basically, um, I'm loading an audio file right here. You can see this at the bottom. I have my buffer set up. So I'm loading audio files from these two directories. And if you use this code, this is the only thing you should you should uh, change. You can just use any samples that you like. Just point it to somewhere on your computer rather than this guy. Um, and then you should be able to, to uh, follow along with that. Um, so yeah, this, this one I really liked. We can give it a bit more of an attack, a bit of a slower release as well. We can speed up the clock. Uh, 
Um, we can set this shorter again. Let's try very short. So fun stuff you can have with that. Then we have a bass sound, which is being modulated um, by an LFO. It has a reverb in there as well. Uh, another bass sound here, a little bit more standard. Uh, a saw, just a plug. And what is this? It's a nice gliding bass. We have an FM plucky here. Um, which again, so all the parameters you see at the top here, these we can control, right? These are the input arguments. So I can say, for example, let's see, what do we have here? We have a C ratio. Let's see what that does. C ratio. Sometimes I forget myself as well. Okay, so I actually remember that's the carrier ratio uh, frequency. Um, and then we have the m modulation ratio frequency as well. And so this gives you variety in the sound and we can later control all of these parameters in our def synth all the way over here. So you can see those same arguments being used here. C attack, C release, etc. So that's our FM sound. Let's go a little bit further. Um, this one is pretty nice. This is, was something new for me. So FFT synthesis is where we convert a sample, um, a sample loaded in, in the buffer in Super Collider. In my case, I'm using a vocal sample, and we convert that into FFT bins, which um, then gives us a lot of uh, creative effects we can use. One of them is this brick wall filter, which, which literally cuts off the sound at exactly the frequency you specify, rather than with a slope. Um, in between converting to FFT and converting back, uh, basically we're not in audio domain right here. So you can do a lot more experimental stuff with the sound before you convert it back to um, an audible signal again. Let's listen to this. So it's pretty much, it's, it's fairly close to the original sound, but we can do a lot more with it now. Let's see if we can filter it a bit. You can hear you get that very sharp kind of filter sound. This is a fun one to experiment with. If you're, I wouldn't be the th first thing to do if you are new to Super Collider, but if you're already a little bit experienced, it's a nice one to check out. Then we have a pad. I will go a little bit quicker right now, another pad which is, has a pitch glide in there. We have this metallic sound, which doesn't sound so metallic right now because the pitch is very low. We can set it higher. Right, very pretty. Uh, we have a basic sub, just a distorted or saturated sine wave. And we have this effects thing right here. And this is basically a reverb, um, which we're not really using right now, but once um, you play the sound, you can evaluate this and it will replace um, the out bus. So basically it will, it will put itself in between the synths and the, and the regular output, um, thereby sending all the synths through that, um, through that effect. Replace out is another common super collider technique. All right, so then we get into the actual parts and the processing of them. And this is um, this is where I want to show something. So we start with the drums, um, then we have some bass stuff. This is all um, pretty standard Opus Modus stuff. One thing that we have here is a harmonic progression. I talked about that in the last tutorial. This is a function which allows you to uh, specify which chords you want simply by setting numbers. So if you do 0, 3, 4, 4, you get uh, in C major, you get the C chord, the F, the G, and another G. And that's because the bass is zero. If we set the bass to one, like I do, uh, one would be your tonic chord. So we can listen to this progression. Right, uh, very straightforward progression. Um, and then what I want to show is my favorite part here. 
which is where we start with the sine wave. I have a video on this, um, which is in the Opus Modus 100 second tutorial series, um, but that one goes very fast. So I'd like to dive a little bit deeper in this technique. Basically, what we're doing is we start with a shape. The shape looks like this. Um, we then map that shape to pitches so that we get melodic lines. Um, what we then do is we split these, um, these pitches into two melodic lines together, making the total amount of the of the sequence. This will make more sense as we go along. So let's start here. We have a mod sine wave function and mod sine wave is simply a sine wave function that um, modulates another sine wave function. It has a um, it has a modulation parameter. So uh, what we do with this is let's see if we can just uh, evaluate this first part and then look at it. We can see there we already have a modulated sine wave. Um, the um, iteration of this is set to 20 and then we have the resolution of 190 which basically how, how, how fine it is. We have the actual frequency and we have the actual amplitude. But then what we do is we modulate that with a sawtooth wave which with also a frequency and um, what is the second parameter there? A, um, uh, the first one is the resolution and then it has a very low frequency and then the 0 0.9 is the amplitude. So with that together, I mean, if we do command E, we can see the values of that in numbers, which is not very meaningful. But if we do, um, what is it? Shift option command one, we can actually plot that and see what it looks like, like we did before. So we take that and then we use a vector to pitch function and we say, all right, take that shape that we have, right? This is this one and map it in between the notes D and A. And then we actually get a melodic line, right? And this line follows that same shape that we saw there. Um, so this is a way of, of, of generating pitches um, just based on, on any shape. And, and you, the fun thing is you can you can switch this for any number, like anything that has numbers like this, we can, we can put that to pitches, we can map that to pitches. So then what I wanted to do is I like, I sort of like this. I mean, it's not insanely emotional, but I like where it's going. So another thing I wanted to do is to, to transpose every second note up an octave. So to do that, um, we have our plug B2. So that's this one right here. This is our list. And um, if we just evaluate this here, we can see that it's one long list of notes. Um, usually in Opus Modus, we use sub lists to, to um, tell what a bar is, but here we have just one flat list. So what I'm doing right here is using the MC list function, which is a primitive function of Lisp, um, meaning it's built into Lisp, the coding language. Um, with that, we can actually put every value of that first list and put it in a separate list. And because of that, we can process it more easily because now we can pass that to the pitch transpose function. And for every other list, it will switch between these two parameters. So the first node will be original. The second one will be an octave higher than original again, and then an octave higher. So if we evaluate that, you can see now that um, the G2 has turned into a G3. The C sharp 3 is the same, but the F sharp 3 is now set to an F sharp 4. So it keeps transposing every second note. Right. So up until this point, these are all still quarter notes. So now it's time to use a OMN function, make OMN. And with that, um, we can say, okay, the pitches we already have, um, and we want the length of the region to be the total length of the pitches. That why we, that's why we set the span to pitch, but we do want to create some rhythm for it. So for that, I once again use the polygon rhythm. And if I just evaluate that, that's the rhythm that we're going to use. So what I'm saying is, okay, I want a rhythm with 12 positions, a bar with 12 positions. That's why it looks like triplets right now. If I do 16, it will look and actually be 16 notes. But we say, all right, we want a triplet rhythm. Um, and out of the 12 possible positions, we want to have at least nine beats. And every time you evaluate this, it's going to be 
a little bit different, but it will always follow these rules. It will always be nine notes. It will always be a total of 12 positions. And then with the zero, we just say start at the first point. If I set this to one, it will start um, one triplet eight note later, as you can see there. All right, so that's what we do to create our rhythm. And this is all the make, om, and function. And then we wrap all of that in the om, and to time signature function. Because if I evaluate this right now, it becomes a little bit random. Um, and if we look at it as a list, we can see that once again, it's one gigantic list. Um, but if we set this to a time signature and we evaluate it, we can see that we have sublists now. And that makes it a little bit easier to process the various bars. All right. I hope you're still with me. That's where we are so far. But then one issue is that in this whole section, we have some chords that are playing. So right now, all of this is random, right? Because we start with these sine waves. So what we want to do is we want to map these notes to a certain chord progression. And that's what we can do with the tonality map function. So you can see if we load that function, that the first argument should be a tonality form. Um, this is basically the, the scale that you want to use or the notes that you want to use. So I'm passing this scale two right there. And where does this come from? Well, we have to go a little bit further up. You can see that here I have my scale two. Um, the scale two um, creates this, this necessary list for us. So again, here we need to go a little bit further up because this uses the B chords. So B chords, I, ju I just played to you. And it's this list. It's just the chords. And what we say with this is scale two, I'm using a scale one in another place, but here we say, all right, flatten these chords, which looks like that. I don't, I actually don't think that's necessary because I think they're already flat. Um, and then we say, um, we map that to, or we create a tonality series out of that and we map that to the octave, meaning that if we um, play this, it will, it will keep the original octave. You can see with the tonality series, we have a couple of options there. Um, under map, uh, octave, step, spectra, extent. So I've set that to octave. So this list we create, and this is these are instructions for our other functions. So you can see that per list, um, it uses the ambitus of a piano, meaning that it's going to be the range of a piano, which basically means the full range of notes. Um, the map we have set to octave, and then we can see the notes that um, the later function can choose from when mapping this to our ori original line. So that's that's the scale two parameter. So let's go back here. So we have that, and we pass that into the first argument of the tonality map, which again was that tonality form. And then the second one is simply the original sequence. So now what we have is we go from here. to something that's actually mapped to our, our chord progression. All right, so I thought that still wasn't enough and I wanted to create some variety in, in the rhythm here. So for that, I'm using the length divide function. And the length divide, as the name implies, is able to um, speed up the rhythm, divide the rhythm. Um, we also have a length um, multiply, I think it's called, um, or is it called augment? Length augmentation is the other one. Um, so with this length divide, um, what we can do is we can say, all right, I want um, first the division value to be uh, one over two. And then I want, you need to specify something that happens with the node that is divided. Let's, let's actually remove this for now. So this is where it's doing some uh, division. And that's because I set this to one. So it chooses one event there that it divides. And if you, you can see, if I set it to two, it chooses two events that are being divided. I can go further. Right, so the first number there is um, how many divided events we want, and the second number is um, divide by. So we want to divide by two. If you do, the, if you set this to four, you get uh, much. 
much extremer rhythms. So let's set that to two and to one event per bar. Um, but the, the problem or the issue here is that it starts to introduce nodes that are not in the scale because it doesn't simply repeat the node that's being divided. Um, it just chooses a new pitch. So you get these. You get these enharmonic intervals. Now, there is a way to solve that. You can use the R here, which says repeat the note that you divided. So if we listen to that. I mean, that can be pretty cool, right? Um, so this will just repeat the same note and it will make sure that you stay within your tonality. What I did, however, I um, set this to 12 and 0, thereby specifying a list of intervals. And that means that the divided notes can either be the same, 0, uh, an interval of, of, of none, uh, or an octave up. So let's play that. Right, so you can choose some other safe intervals here as well, such as a, as a fifth. Right, so that, it creates some variety there. Um, and then we set OMN to, two, uh, to, to true, which means that it will, will keep the original form. So we're not even there yet. Um, a, little, a little bit more that's happening here is now finally I have this line and I'm happy with it. The thing is that I have two different instruments that I want to uh, play this line. So I wanted to sort of randomly choose notes and put them in a different voice so that um, later, in, uh, what you'll hear if I play the pieces, we have a plucky kind of sound and we have a <laughs> different sort of plucky kind of sound. And um, I want the same melody line to be played by these two synths. Um, so for that, what we do is we use an incredibly useful function, which is called single events. Um, if we once again take a look at our, our um, or line here, or melodic line. We see that we have every, we have these dashes here, which are the rests. These are the node values. Uh, we have some velocity values and the note itself. If I set this to um, single events, what it will do is it will take every note and combine that with its velocity value and with its length value. And um, because of this, we now have sublists with individual events. This will sound exactly the same. But it will look a little bit crazy because everything is in, in one twelfth of a bar and the bar division changes based on the event. This is necessary, however, because now what we can first do is we can uh, figure out the um, total length of our event. There's other ways to do this, but um, with this we can now see that we have 275 uh, events. And then what we do is we create uh, two lists based on that length. Um, of binary values. And this looks like uh, it is one list, but it's actually two. Where is it? Oh yeah, see there? So this is the first list, and you can see this is the second list. And the interesting thing with this is that we generate binary. You can take a closer look to this gen binary function. I will not go into it too much, um, but what it will do is, is they will all be unique lists. So you can see if I have in the first position of the first list a zero, then it will be a one in the first position of the second list. And if I have a one in the second position, I have a zero in the other one. So this one creates two lists that are that are um, inverted, basically. And we map that to our, uh, we use the binary to section to um, map that to our rhythm. And then what we get is two independent lines that if you play them together, they make up the full sequence. So here's the first one. And this is the second one. And together they sound like this. Right, so now I can, because I have them now separated, I can set them up to um, different synths. Um, basically, I'm using this list to, to pass the events that I don't want. So that's why I'm using this pass function there. 
um, that this is the, the main thing that I wanted I wanted to show you. I didn't invent uh, this thing. I learned it from uh, Stefan, who is also you can you can find him on the Opus Modus forum. Um, he does lessons as well. So I took a lesson with him. I asked him, hey, how, how can I achieve this? And this is uh, well, I really love this trick. So. We are almost there. We have that. And then um, the last thing I do here is I generate a pass list. And you can see that we have only um, um, even numbers here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, blah, blah, blah. Because um, between 16 and 33 here, I um, wanted to no change, no pauses. Um, that's why I gave a custom list. Otherwise, you would do this progr programmatically. I actually have a function at the bottom here, which is called remove if not even. Um, this one, you can see it generates um, even values with, uh, with two uh, or with one step in between. I can have two steps in between as well. If I do it like that, um, or like this. Oh. So now I get 4, 8, 12, 16, etc. Um, so you can use that. And of course, this you might have guessed. If we want only the odd numbers, we would do that. All right. So, but I didn't do that because I had a bit of a custom thing I wanted to do here. So we create that pass list and then um, we finally set that up to the um, to the final list and the reason i'm doing this this is just more of a compositional thing um i have later in this section i have sort of a call and response where i have the first uh, first half of the bar is uh, a long bass note and then um the response to that is these sort of faster melody lines if i play as you can hear is to a two note rest and there So you can see that every time there's like a, 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 um, I'm in a, a two four bar here. There's there's two quarter notes rest in between before it repeats the rhythm, um, and then when we get to this section, there's no rest in between. That's the part between sixteen and thirty three. So um, these are the final lines that I'm using, line one and line two. And you can see that I assign them here in my uh, assemble sequence. So this is where this is where we just assemble everything together. Um, we use an OMN to time signature, a pitch transpose for extra flexibility, and then an assemble seek. And then um, because this is a super collider, we use a special def um, SC score here, uh, which somehow yeah, this one, Def SC score, and that one, um, it doesn't allow us to skip to the score in the in the middle simply because of this, uh, the super collider part involved. So what I'm doing is I'm also having this whole block of assembled subseq, which allows me to set a starting and an ending position. And this way, when you're working on the score, you can say, all right, start from bar 16, for example, and you can just work on that section. Uh, with a regular SC score, you would just be able to click in here and uh, go to that section. All right, so then we convert all of our lists to Super Collider. Super Collider doesn't like to see notes. It doesn't know anything about this kind of stuff because this is Opus Modus notation. So um, instead of sending that and, and making it very confused, uh, we convert everything to MIDI notes as such. And the same is true for the length. So we can see the lengths here, or set also do that. Um, but we don't want that. We want to have actual values in, um, in ratios here. So that looks like that. All right, then we get uh, to some modulation stuff that we have right here. The most interesting thing perhaps is that um, I'm creating some noise samples here, which I multiply by 0 0.8 to make it uh, a little bit lower values, um, which you can do with a simple, simple lambda and a map car. And then um, I have a second vector, which if we look at it, it's just a curve up. So uh, together with this with this vector one and vector two, I'm um, I'm adding those to each other, which uh, actually doesn't look very different. As you can see, that there's a little bit more movement in the line there. I, I can see if I can make this more extreme, and this as well. You can see that the line becomes humanized, if we can say that. 
Uh, so I'll revert that for now. And then finally, when you're going to play around with this synth, it's going to be uh, three things that you have to, um, or I said synth, but I mean score. There's three things that you need to do. First, you will do a command E on this first proc and proc and just means that it will evaluate the whole block in between. So first you do that for your samples. If you do it like this, you will get an error because uh, you probably don't have this folder and this path on your uh, on your computer unless you have the same name as I have. Um, so you want to point this towards uh, a location that you know. It can be just one as well. These are these are not very important for the sound. They're used in two different synths. Um, but first you will evaluate that. Then you will evaluate the whole super collider part by just putting your your cursor there, pressing Command E. And then uh, it should set all your super collider, super collider code. Now, again, this won't work if you don't have super collider set up. And this is why I referred to the other video. If you go to the library here, you can see under my extensions, I have load CL collider. And this part is responsible for starting the super collider server as soon as I um, start Opus Modus, which you should be able to see, for example, in your um, activity monitor. Active, what am I doing wrong? Activity monitor. Ah, there it is. Strange. Um, but there you can see if you type SC, SC synth is running here. Um, so that, that is a prerequisite, I would say. Uh, let's go back to here. Um, so that's the second block you evaluate. And then lastly, there is the score, which you could do evaluate from here, or we can go all the way down and evaluate it from there. I will do that in a second. Um, one last thing I wanted to show for those of you already a little bit more advanced is that within the synth here, so here we specify the synth name, base one is for the for the synth actually called base one over there. Um, and then we have the notes and the duration which are necessary. Um, we want to know which note the synth needs to get and we want to know how long it should take. Um, and then we have all the other parameters that we specify in the synth. Now for this, one thing that I found uses very well is um, perhaps a good example is the hi-hat. What we do with the hi-hat modulation is we uh, count the length of the notes and then um, so we count the lengths of the hi-hats in the A section which is 112 hi-hats uh, so this is the length of the sequence and then um, we can use that to set our um, to basically create new random values so uh, we use the hi-hat count here and then we repeat in this case i wanted to have a value of zero so i say gen repeat and then the, whatever long the a section or the b section is and then give it this value and for the a section i wanted to highest to be random so i create some noise values based on this high count so these should be let's see we said that um, the A section for the hi-hats has 112 notes. So here we're creating 112 random values. And this uh, we then set up to the panning of the hi-hats. So it's going to randomly uh, pan around, etc. Um, and then if I'm not using that, I use something like this where I say I, I give it the vector range, uh, which makes it very easy to scale your values. In this case, they will never be outside of this range. So it will imp will be in between 0 0.1 and 4 and then we just generate our values like that so in this case it will only generate two values because i said that i wanted that all right so that's a lot of talking um i will just play the score for you if you have questions about this score please feel free to ask either on youtube or on the forum um, i would say the forum is more useful because while you're there you can find a lot of um, answers to other questions you might have um, that we have an active community there um, you can put comments right under the video um, and i will check those regularly so yeah don't uh, don't be shy to ask i will also upload the code and then finally i will leave you with um, this piece of music i made can we <laughs> i hope we can call it music it's fairly random but uh, I, I really love it so uh, thank you and i will see you in the in the next video